On the previous video of the channel, I broke down the 3D and materials panel in Illustrator and showed you everything there is to know about it. Now we're gonna see it in action and create four different 3D effects using typography. If you haven't seen the other video yet, go watch it now and then come back here. Alright, let's go! In this tutorial we're gonna use a lot of different panels, so if you don't see some of them, they can all be opened through the window menu. The first one is a holy fact and it is super easy to make. I'm using the Montserrat font and I'm gonna type the word whole, but you can type whatever you want and use a different font if you feel like it. Just bear in mind that this effect works best with a very geometric and blocky font. After that, and this is an optional step, I want to replace my letter O for a big circle to play around with the concept of a hole by making an actual big hole in the text. This will require me to outline the text, which I'll do by pressing Ctrl Shift O. Now I'm gonna double click the object to isolate it, select the letter O and delete it. Now I'm gonna press L to select the ellipse tool and draw a circle. I'm holding the Shift key to draw a perfect circle and the Alt key to draw it from the center. And I'll make the circle a bit bigger than the rest of the text, just to be more dramatic. Then I'll adjust the spacing and press Escape to leave the isolation mode. If you skip the last step, this is where you catch up. To be able to make the whole effect, we need this object to be a cutout in another object. So we'll make a rectangle big enough to cover everything and place it behind the actual word. Let me change the color so we can see that it is in fact behind. You can move objects up or down in the stack by holding Ctrl and pressing the square bracket keys. Close moves up and Open moves down. Then we'll select both objects, open the Pathfinder panel and use the exclude function. This will use the object that's on top to make a hole on the object that's on the bottom. Now we're ready to move on to the 3D part. Black is a really hard color to work with in 3D, so let's change this to something brighter. I'll use red, but you can use whatever you want. Then let's open the 3D and materials panel and select the extrude option in the object tab. I'll change the rotation to isometric top on the drop down menu, but virtually any rotation will work for this effect. We also need to increase the depth of the extrusion until you can't see the bottom of the hole anymore. Then on the materials tab, we're gonna increase the roughness all the way to 1. Finally, in the lighting tab, we're gonna increase the intensity to 140, the softness to 80 and turn off ambient light, which will make the shadows a little darker and increase the contrast. Both material and lighting settings are personal preference. You can mess around with these settings as much as you like to get them to look how you want. These are just the settings that I'm using because they look nice but don't restrict yourself to just blindly following tutorials online. Experiment for yourself and find what you like. Once we have everything set up the way we want, we can hit the render button. Now all we need to do is hide everything that is not the hole itself, and we'll do that with a clipping mask. We'll select the pen tool by pressing the letter P, and we're gonna draw a rectangle covering the entire word. Then we'll select both objects and press Ctrl 7 to create a clipping mask. Lastly, we need to create a background of the same color. But as you can see, the color is not exactly the same. And that's because our 3D object changes colors based on the lighting and material settings after we hit render. And Illustrator doesn't allow you to just pick the color of the final 3D render using the eyedropper. You can see that it picks the color of the object before being affected by the rendering. But there is a workaround for this. Simply take a screenshot by pressing the print screen key on your keyboard and paste it inside Illustrator by pressing Ctrl V. Now just select the background and sample the color of the 3D object from the screenshot instead. And there you go, the 3D effect is ready. If you choose not to replace the letter O for the big circle, you can leave the text as a text object, which means you can edit the text even after applying the 3D effect. Just remember to turn off rendering before editing the word. Needless to say, Patreon supporters will have special cool extras to download. I'll make this Illustrator file available for download to make it easier for you to follow along and experiment with the effects. It has every effect saved as a graphic style, the fonts and vectors I used, and the finished projects as well. 
Supporting can cost you as low as $2 and the link is in the description below. Now, back to the video. Next on the list we have this isometric effect and this one is even simpler. Let's start by typing our text and outlining it with Ctrl Shift O. Again, for this effect a bold geometric font works better. I'm using the font Barlow. After outlining it, we'll change the color to a light grey, remember, black is hard to work with in 3D, and then ungroup the characters by pressing Ctrl Shift G or using the right click menu. In this effect, we'll have two different rotations, both on the object and the lighting, so we'll have to work on each character individually. On the first character, we'll select the extrude effect in the 3D panel and set the depth value to something similar to the thickness of the font, just so it doesn't look disproportional. For me, 50 pixels is working fine. Then, on the rotation, we'll select the isometric right option. On the material tab, we'll keep the default material selected, but change the roughness to 0.6. In the lighting tab, we'll first turn on shadows, set them to below object and increase the shadow bounds. Then we'll set the light rotation to 0 degrees, so the shadow is exactly behind the object, increase the height to 80 degrees and the softness to 80%. Finally, we'll turn off ambient light to give it more contrast. These are the settings that I think look good, but as always, feel free to play around with them and create your own look. We'll not work on the color of the objects just yet, and you'll see why in a bit. Let's move on to the second character. Some of the settings will be the same. Select the second character, add the extrude effect and set the depth to the same value as before. On the rotation, we'll now choose isometric left instead of right. The lighting settings are all the same except for the rotation. Since our 3D object is rotated 90 degrees, now facing to the left, we'll have to rotate the light as well, so set the rotation to 90 degrees. Now, here's the trick. Instead of applying all these settings manually on every single character, we're gonna create graphic styles to make our life easier. Open the graphic styles panel, select the first character and hit the plus button on the bottom of the panel. Double click the graphic style and rename it to isometric right. Then do the same thing with the second character and rename it isometric left. Now you can just select the characters that will be rotated to the right and apply the isometric right graphic style and then do the same thing for the left ones. So much easier, right? Now, let's move on to the colors. For this effect, I chose a rainbow style color scheme and painted each letter with a different color. I set the brightness to 100 and saturation to about 50 on all the colors to get these soft pastel tones and then just played with the hue for each one. Now, before we render it, we need to work on the position of the letters. The cool thing about this isometric effect is that you can arrange the characters in lots of different ways. This is how I set up mine, but you can play around and try new things. Keep in mind you can always use the shortcut Ctrl and square brackets to move objects up or down in the stack, to make them appear in the front or behind each other on the artboard. After we're done positioning them, we'll create a rectangle covering the entire artboard to work as a background and send it to the back. Then we can just select one of the letters, open the render menu, turn on ray tracing and check the remember and apply to all option. And now the effect is ready. Ok, I didn't know how to call this effect, so I called it noodle effect. Anyways, the idea behind this one is that you use a very thin and round font, so when you apply the 3D you have this perfectly smooth effect all around the 3D object. Looks a bit like a neon sign as well, but unfortunately Illustrator doesn't allow us to create objects that emit light. For this effect, I started out with the font Nikenly, but thought it would look nice to add some flourishes, so that's what I did. You can just outline the text and draw the flourishes using the pen tool, adjusting the stroke weight to match the thickness of the font. Though, in my case, I decided to go a step further and actually draw the entire word from scratch using the pen tool. You can use any font for this effect, but I think this one fits perfectly because it has a consistent stroke weight, really emphasizing that smooth round effect. After you have the font outlined and edited the way you want, we can start working on the 3D. The effect we're gonna use for this one is the inflate effect, and the overall 3D effect is pretty simple. We're gonna set the depth to zero so it's perfectly round, and check inflate both sides. 
For the rotation, I chose off-axis front, but feel free to choose the one you like. On the materials tab, we'll set the roughness to zero to make good use of the round shape of our 3D object and get those nice reflections to show. As for the lighting, we have a lot of options to choose from. First, though, we definitely want to turn shadows on. Then we can experiment with just a hard shadow for that bright sunlight look, or perhaps make it softer for a more smooth aesthetic. For my final result, I'll be using 145 degrees in the rotation, 45 degrees on the height, 80% smoothness and 2% on distance from object. Then just hit render and you're all set. Just be careful because complex fonts and shapes can result in slow rendering times and sometimes Illustrator can also crash. For this wireframe effect, we'll once again need a very geometric font. We'll start by typing our text and outlining it with Ctrl Shift O. For this effect, we'll use two different 3D objects, so make a copy of the outline text by dragging it holding the Alt key and set it aside for now. On the first text, we'll apply the plane effect and set the rotation to isometric right. But like always, you can play around with the rotation you want. The color is set to a light gray and the base material is set to the default values. They won't matter much for this effect. Then, for the lighting, we'll need some more specific settings. We want a light coming from behind the object, so turn on shadows, change the position to below object, increase the shadow bounce and play around with the rotation slider until the light is at the right angle. If you're using the same rotation as me, set the light rotation to 180 degrees. This effect benefits from very soft shadows, so we'll set the light softness to something around 85% and turn off ambient light to increase the contrast. Let's give this a render and see how it's looking. And… nice! We'll leave rendering on for this object since we won't change it anymore. Now, before we work on the second 3D object, let's add a background to the artboard just so it's easier to see the wireframe when we place it there. I'll add a blue background because this effect gives me blueprint vibes, but use the one you want. For the second 3D object, we will use the extrude effect. Set the depth to whatever you want, but I'll keep it roughly the same size as the thickness of the font. We'll need to set the object rotation to the same as the previous object, so in my case, isometric right. In this second 3D object, we don't need to make any changes to the material or the lighting, because we just want the wireframe. So open the render settings, turn on wireframe and click render. After that, go to the object menu and choose expand appearance. Now we have the wireframe of the 3D mesh as a vector object and we can start working on it. This is a bit of a tedious task. I fried my brains trying to think of an automated way to do it, but I couldn't come up with anything. For this sort of hand-drawn look that we're going for, we need every line to be separated from the overall shape, which means we have a lot of path splitting ahead of us. The wireframe render also doesn't help much, since it'll generate lots of overlapping paths, which we'll need to delete as well. So, Here's the most optimized way of doing all this. First, let's make a copy of the wireframe by dragging it holding the Alt key. Then we'll select a copy, ungroup it with Ctrl Shift G or using the right click menu, select all the back faces of the wireframe and drag them away. After that, we can select what's left of the copied wireframe and delete it. Now we'll split all the lines on this object and we can do this by using the scissors tool, shortcut C. We'll select the first character and click once on top of each corner of the path, which will cause it to split, leaving us with individual lines. We'll do this for all letters of our word. After splitting all the lines, we'll select everything and group it again using Ctrl G or the right click menu. Now that we have the back faces of the mesh all broken down, we're going to use the original copy of the wireframe as a guide to place the front faces. This way we don't mess with the perspective. We'll just place the back faces on top of the original wireframe, make a copy of them by dragging holding the Alt key and position them on top of the front faces. After that, you can just select the original copy, delete it, select both the front and the back faces and ungroup them again. Now we have both the front and the back faces, all broken down into individual lines. All that's left for us to do is select the Line Segment tool, shortcut backslash, and connect the front to the back faces. 
that's the most tedious task, so put on some good music and get to work. After you're all done, just group everything again so you don't leave lines behind when dragging the objects. Now we'll change the stroke color to white, open the stroke panel and adjust its weight. This will vary depending on the size of your 3D object, but for me one pixel looks fine. Then we'll add a stroke profile on the bottom of the panel. Just open the drop down menu and select the second profile. It'll give the sort of hand drawn look to the stroke, making it thinner towards each end. After that, we'll open the gradient panel, make sure stroke is selected, and click once in the gradient slider to create a new gradient on the stroke. Then we'll double click the black color slider, change it to white, click once again in the middle of the slider to add a new color, which will automatically be white, and change its position to exactly 50%. To finish the effect, we just need to set the opacity to 0% on both ends of the gradient, then grab the wireframe and place it on top of the 3D object. And now, we're done! If you enjoyed this video, check this other one here, I think you'll like it. Thank you to all my patrons who help me make high quality content like this one. Check the links in the description if you want to support the channel or join our Discord server. And don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any doubts, leave a comment down below and I'll answer it. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye!